Welcome back to another episode of Money Honeys, where we, Freddie, Chantel, and Devin, are on a holy mission to get our bank accounts and our asses better. Oh yeah. That's right, that's Always right. Goal. Mm-hmm. So you want to become a content creator, or maybe you don't and you're just interested in the business behind making money online. Well, you are in luck because today we're talking about something that we collectively know a thing or two about. Mm-hmm. Internet content. Specifically, making money from content. Because that's how we met. You guys, we're sisters in content. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Do I so hate cute. it? So cute. So cute. <laughs> no, you it. love it. <laughs> Instead of sisters in Christ, <laughs> sisters in content. We love it. I <laughs> Well, let's get real, though. If making content is what we do, and sometimes we've done wild things for the content, what would y'all say is the wildest thing you've done to make money, slash, for the views? I mean, for Chantel, it uh, it has to be painting with our period blood. Right. Which, okay, we get a lot of, like, I researched us on TikTok <laughs> last night for when we were making this episode. Um, and a lot of people always talk about like that video. It's like, uh, what were they doing? Like, yeah. what were they doing? And I get it. Sure, sure, sure. But also, it was one of the most fun videos. <laughs> it was. And you know what was wild at the time? It's like, it didn't, it didn't feel like that extreme. No. You know? I like, think it's because we brought in an actual artist who did that. Who had done it. As a, right. as a political statement. Yeah, she was just like, here's how I collected my blood. <laughs> and we were like, okay, God, thank you so much for this tip. <laughs> and we flew her down. Yeah, yeah. I, loved that. I loved that episode. Right. So. Yeah. Okay, I mean, it, it, like, it, it feels like it was like doing something quote unquote extreme, but in order to help like destigmatize like menstruation and menstruation blood. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, maybe just, cause I, I am a type of person that gets squeamish with blood, but it's like menstruation blood feels very different because I'm like, I we all like see and touch that shit every a week month. out of every month. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mine started at 6 a.m. Oh my God. I know. I'm so sorry. Oh, Thank Shanti. you. Thank you. Thank you. How about you, Fred? What do you think? You know, I was trying to think of this. I think one of the craziest things that I had to do was just like a hot dog eating contest. It doesn't (laughs) sound as extreme as like painting with our period (laughs) blood. But I was like, why was I stuffing hot? I don't even know. I don't know. What? 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 what, I don't even know what the video (laughs) was. I think it was just like. It was Soft's video. It it was. was. It was a hot dog eating contest. That was her idea. She was very fascinated. I think it was around summertime in July. Oh, there was a there was an event. There was a, a festival or something happening. Where yeah. Oh, like a BuzzFeed we, event. Yeah, we used to have like rooftop events all the time. No, I think it was like a um, a national a national hot dog oh. eating contest. <laughs> I'm like the BuzzFeed was BuzzFeed doing a cupcake party. party. <laughs> Wait, I need to look this up right now. Yeah. I don't know what was there's, the frame a, of this video. What was well, the actual competition? It happens every year in July, like Fourth of July, and people actually like compete and like stick hot dogs and water. So it go yeah. Okay, yes, you guys. <laughs> it's women try competitive eating. Oh yeah. This is it. I totally forgot we had to dip the. Okay, it was. It was you, Candace, Jen, and, and Sof. Oh. Oh my God. That's so funny. Yeah, we had to dip the hot dogs in water to make the bread easier to digest. Oh God, but that just I remember unappetized. I was a fellow then, so I really wasn't officially a part of Ladylike yet, but I remember being in the background, like holding the camera, being like, oh my God, no, don't do it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, Freddie, don't. Don't, Freddie, no. Oh, wow. Oh, was that a drone shot? We got a drone we shot? Did. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah, we're just like scrubbing through this video and it doesn't even. Who won? Can we get to who? Who, who did win? Was it Candace? It doesn't even feel like memory lane to me because I like don't remember this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here I am in the audience standing next to Jared. Because <laughs> I was like, did I film this? I don't, I don't have a memory of filming it. I don't think I filmed it. You just attended. You were just an audience I member. I guess I just attend. Sof is holding some sort of trophy. I don't know if that means she won or if. Well, you know, Sof, she got super competitive. We just yeah, I gave, think she did win. I yeah. think Sof did win. Yeah. 
God bless. All right. Oh, yeah, because we were saying soft dog, soft dog. <laughs> okay, well. God bless. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we did some we did some wild things. <laughs> Back the in the day. From hot dogs to period. <laughs> hot dogs to period blood. Wow. Yeah. Oh. All right, y'all. Well, that was a trip down memory lane. When we come back, we're going to explore how the big publishers, the big dogs like BuzzFeed, actually make money. And we're going to talk about the most effective ways you can turn your time online into dollars. And we're going to do it after the break. And we're back. And before we launch into the next segment, we just need to preface that we are basing today's conversation on A, our collective experience, B, all companies are different, and C, we are not cute financial experts. We're just cute. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the facts. (laughs) Lates. We know, and by the way, when we say publishers, we're talking about our Voxes. We're talking about Mm -hmm. BuzzFeed. We're talking about the big players who collectively aggregate a lot of social content under one umbrella and get a lot of views or traffic that way. So we know from our experience that publishers, aka big players in the internet space, have a lot of streams of revenue. But can y'all guess the five ways these places make money? I know a lot of places their main stream comes from like doing branded content. Yep. So like Target will be like, hey, um, basically kind of like a new model for making commercials. Right. And so then that's when it's like, lady like uses the Google phone, you know, whatever. Um, spawn that's con. a very bad version of it, but mm-hmm. big level spawn con essentially. Yeah, that was one of mine. Um, AdSense or uh, ads. Sure, yep. I would say, yep, yep, display ads, yeah. I know BuzzFeed makes money from affiliate links. So like Huge. all the Amazon um, lists that I am always on. I never buy anything, but I don't know. I just always like looking. I know. I always go to. That's where they get me. I sometimes will go to buzzfeed.com slash trending and I'll be like, okay, mm. this is what's trending right now. And then I always click on those like 50 things on Amazon that you yes. didn't know about. Yeah. Yes. Or it's like, if you hate cleaning, you'll love these products. And I'm like, I do hate cleaning. <laughs> Let me see if I love these products. Fucking got you. <laughs> it got me. <laughs> so we have, you guys said SponCon, you said display ads, and you said affiliate links. We've mm-hmm. got two more. I'll just tell you guys. Yeah. So number <laughs> at this point, let me just say. So we have display ads, subscriptions, oh. spawn con, events, oh. and affiliate linking. Right. So you don't need, but like what events? Don't you remember how <laughs> at a certain point at BuzzFeed in our time at Lady Lake, you know, our manager would come to us and be like, let's do an event. Let's put on an event. I think that we should be doing these things. Remember? Yeah. I think BuzzFeed, um, I think they don't really do them, but they should have been doing them. Yeah, so I feel like we have, in our collective experience, have touched all of these revenue streams. But if you think about it, if we like back out from our personal experience, having five different revenue streams is not not bad advice, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of what sets digital advertisers and digital publishers apart from regular publishers, right? Like, if you think about a newspaper, we had the, the only way they make money is through either subscriptions or display ads. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There are three other ways that online publishers can create more revenue, which I think is important to note. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like a newspaper can sell their like merch and stuff, but it's like how many people are buying like an LA Times shirt? H- hoodie. <laughs> I would if it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's probably not a, a huge side for them. Maybe it is. You know, I don't know. I don't know. We should know. call up Daddy LA Times. <laughs> <laughs> so you see this chart I have here for y'all? Yes. yes. Do you see the little LOL? Or it's actually a wind sticker at the bottom <laughs> that I can <can't. laughs> <laughs> Yes. So this, I, last night, did a deep dive with a little glass of wine into the 2021 BuzzFeed annual financial report. Mm -hmm. 
And so I found this. Last year in revenue, BuzzFeed experienced incredible growth. They made $62 million in advertising, $130 million in content, and $206 million in commerce. Oh no, Fred, I see you taking a deep breath. <laughs> the Twitch's overall yields 24% growth for year to year from 2020 to 2021. Mm. I mean, good for them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm glad that like, they're growing, that's great. Um, <laughs> I would like to grow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love for them to continue growing so that my stocks can be worth yeah. something. Mm-hmm. I mean, I found this financial like report quite enlightening because as a content creator myself, who is constantly whoring herself out <laughs> for web engagement, this doc is essentially BuzzFeed's letter to investors saying like, oh, we're doing great, we're so profitable, but also if you wanna give us more money, that'd be cute too. So I learned so many things. Like as of 2021, digital advertising represents $179 billion of the market. Mm. Cut me off a piece of that. Video and social, aka what we do, is growing at a compound rate of 31% between 2017 and 2021. So wow. th- this is that's life affirming. Our skill set of what we do is in demand. Whether yeah. These publishers may tell us otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2021, BuzzFeed drove 600 million Christian dollars <laughs> in, attributable, in, in attributable transactions to their advertisers and affiliate links alone. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about, those Amazon yeah. listicles. Amazon listicles. Mm-hmm. And then I also, like, the wool was pulled from my eyes when I was reading this. You know, like, wire cutter? That's yeah. just an aggregator of affiliate links. Mm-hmm. So we think of like these sites like Wirecutter, like BuzzFeed as like leaders, thought leaders of like what the best products are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they're not necessarily what's the best products. It's just what affiliate links they have on hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. So that being said, Wirecutter does give really good recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, don't you come for Wirecutter? <laughs> That's my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a very committed relationship. Um, yeah. No, it's interesting because it's like I, I'm curious because even like the the higher the traffic, the more money that they get. And so it's like from Wirecutter, it's like how much money are they getting from like the top click? I remember when we were at BuzzFeed, we did an affiliate link deal, which was another thing, like we never really learned about the affiliate links deals that were attached to our videos, mm-hmm. um, which is something to note, we never knew. Um, but we had an affiliate link deal with Tarte, like I think around 2019, mm. that our videos alone drove like $2 million worth of sale for sales for Tarte. I did not know that. Yeah. How did you know that? Where, where, who told? Oh. Our old manager, one of our old managers who I was close I had no with, idea. told us that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. Wow. Yep. Just from our videos alone on As Is. Because our, our videos would get like million views minimum. Mm hmm. If it was under a million, we'd be like, mm, mm-hmm. it didn't perform that mm-hmm. well. Even if it was like half a million. <laughs> right. Can you imagine? <laughs> On, on YouTube, not counting any other views. Right. And something I think we should note about BuzzFeed, because I think sometimes people think, oh, like you were independent or you were creators, content creators for BuzzFeed. You guys must have raked in social media deals, mm. which we didn't because BuzzFeed as a whole would package us with a lot of other products. So you could never just buy a ladylike video. It would be like you have to buy seven or eight different videos across BuzzFeed channels. We were never really. It was very hard to just purchase our time and our content individually. They should have been able to do that. I feel like they missed out on a lot of opportunities. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you read that paragraph? That, <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that I've. Um, Shanti's going to read us a little paragraph, you guys. Okay, from, this is from the current report. Mm-hmm. 
Um, at the same time, reputation, ethics, and quality matter now more than ever. Social platforms can no longer rely on user-generated content and moderation policies as they are increasingly exposed to liability for allowing toxic and, mis and misleading articles, posts, and videos to be posted and shared on their platforms. These platforms need high quality brand safe content, which BuzzFeed is uniquely able to provide at scale. Social platforms are important partners for us as we are the streaming services for which we help drive subscriptions, reduce churn and market new shows. Thoughts, feelings. And for those who don't know, user generated content is what it's just like what you see on TikTok. It's users generating their own content, content, aka making videos and publishing it. So what this is saying is like BuzzFeed. Pretty is, much our gatekeepers. Our gatekeepers. It, yeah. I see this in relation to um, like the kind of like fake news and shit like that where people are just posting stuff that is like blatantly false yeah because plat social platforms like facebook and stuff like don't moderate it how they, they really don't yeah. yeah so i mean i guess it i mean it does make sense there is more of like a chain of command and like checks and balances mm -hmm. that buzzfeed offers and other digital publications offer you know because we do like working at buzzfeed what would happen when we would make a video right we would shoot the video, mm -hmm. edit the video, send it out for notes. There were a chain of command of all of these different groups who had to kind of check our facts and make sure, mm -hmm. check technical stuff, but also check like our facts and what we're saying and making sure that it like makes sense. The mm -hmm. research team, like there was a lot of checks and balances. The legal team. Yeah, the legal team that like we had to go through before a video would go up, mm -hmm. which is not the same for individual creators. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And so to me, this, this is sounding like their argument for why they are still competitive in the digital marketing space. So tell me, Lades, do you ever feel like a plastic bag? Uh, do you ever feel like an internet dinosaur? Oh yeah, I feel like I'm not like on the internet anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. I really do. I mean, I feel like things are constantly changing. Um, even with like, when you think about just social media period, like take the, like the digital publications out of it, like, Instagram is just making all of these changes like the algorithm is just not the same as it was mm -hmm. four or five years ago mm -hmm. no one's seeing at people's posts mm -hmm. that they actually follow mm -hmm. like there's just all of they're popping in random accounts on your feed so that then you accidentally like something then you're like oh wait I don't even follow this person right <laughs> it's just like a lot going on right yeah. now <laughs> which mm -hmm. takes me to that point of feeling like a dinosaur and like just like whiplash like I just don't even know what's going on <laughs> my um my tiktok account that i don't really like like make stuff or post stuff but it's one that I, I use to like like stuff and like fave stuff um it's chantel houston one because at some point i made at chantel houston and i couldn't figure out how to log back into it <laughs> i thought i was logging back into it and i was just making another account and oh, so no. Chantel Houston cannot be accessed. Oh my god! But Chantel Houston won. <laughs> Follow her. She doesn't post. I'm all <laughs> up on it. I'm all up on it. Number one in our hearts. Number Chantel one Houston in our won. Hearts. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, damn, I feel old. Well, I, I don't, but I don't care about feeling old. Yeah, me neither. I'm I mean, like, it's whatever. Just, it's so everything is changing so much. Like there was an article that came out a couple of weeks ago that was saying like Google's impressions are down because everyone is using TikTok and Instagram as search engines now. Which like Google's been the number one player for search engines. You mean Google.com? Yes. I thought you meant Google as a company, even like YouTube. Nah, Google. Yeah, dot com. com. But like I think about when I look, go to get my hair and nails done, I look up pictures on Pinterest or Instagram. Uh -huh. I don't. I don't go to Google for that because it's not. Yeah, right. It's not. There's no aesthetic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't even realize Google is no longer cool. Yeah. I. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, 
I mean, even like rec- even when it comes to like recipes mm, and stuff, people yeah. are on TikTok for sure. For like, sure. I did not know that. Yeah, I need to get out. I've been looking for some new recipes. Oh yeah, I've been using Google.com like a noob. <laughs> <laughs> Type it into TikTok. Yeah. Wow, Chantel Houston one is gonna be all over her new little recipes. <laughs> Cannot wait. <laughs> I mean, but the fact of the matter is, we are 2017 internet famous. God bless. That was five years ago. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like so much like older. Honestly, yeah, I'd rather be internet famous in 2017 than in 2022. Yeah. Ooh, tell me more. Uh, I don't know. I'm feeling like. I mean, it's always been the wild, wild west on the internet, but I just feel like even now, it's just getting, I'm overwhelmed by it. I'm overwhelmed by social media. I'm overwhelmed by, you know, the idea of just, you know, people getting canceled left and right. Like everyone's, it's just a lot. It's just a lot for me. Mm. That's so true. Even how it's like, it's like, okay, because it used to just kind of be like Instagram was like the big player. And then it was like, okay, if you have a presence on Twitter, like that's a plus. Right. Not a not a requirement, anything. Whereas now it's like, okay, but do you have a TikTok? Or it's like, you have a YouTube. Okay, but do you have an Instagram? You have an Instagram. Okay, but do you have a TikTok? Yeah. You have like, you know, there's like so much where it's like if you post something, it has to go 80 different places. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. Yeah, that's the thing. There's just so many more platforms now and big players in the space where it's like, you know, and they all have different nuanced style of posting. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's, you can't really like, you can do an extent, but you can't really copy and paste across all social media. No. Like you just can't, it won't work the same. No, I don't have the time. And and we are tired. We're tired. We have shows to watch. Yeah, yeah very <laughs> We have important. recipes to find. Yeah, very. We have cats to pet. We have yeah. cats to pet. Very we important. have naps to take. Uh, yeah, I know. You know, we have weddings to plan. We have you weddings know? to plan. Oh Stuff God. to do. We shouldn't feel bad, and I don't think we are about being internet dinosaurs because the internet is constantly reinventing itself. And there is a school of thought that believes that the biggest social media stars, a.k.a. the highest earners on a platform, are the first ones to that platform. You mm. think about Brittany Broski. You think about... Uh, the D'Amelio The people. D'Amelios on TikTok. Yeah. You think about, let's even switch to YouTube. Like, think about, like, who was big, like, Joey Graceffa back in the day. Yeah. Or, like... Grace Mamrie. And, Grace Mamrie. Um, Tyler, Tyler Oakley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like Tyler the Creator, but that's not his name. <laughs> Tyler the yeah. Tyler the YouTube Creator. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. We're gonna get sued by the Tyler the Creator. <laughs> he's the only. I would be honored. Yeah, I would be honored right. if he's listening. If you're listening, hey Tyler, try try it. Please try. I would welcome it. Um. So to. F- Quote finance, BuzzFeed's financial report above, Jonah is arguing that they're still competitive in the space because A, you can't trust UGC content. B, BuzzFeed has quote unquote figured out how to make strong viral content at scale. And C, they have a strong relationship with the platforms. How do you feel about that argument of I their mean, strategy? To an extent, I do think it's correct. Because not being able to trust UGC, where it's like even Facebook, like because of all the shit that was being posted on Facebook, like I hate Facebook now. Oh, yeah. You know, versus like. Also, but Facebook, if you want to sponsor. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. But like, okay, I mean, I won't say I hate Facebook, but like the, where like all, all, all the stuff that was being posted on Facebook really put a lot of like distrust and made people very disgruntled about the platform as a whole. And I think also kind of just like downgraded the quality of the platform. And so it's like, in in one respect, it's like, is that gonna be eventually what happens with like most UGC places? I don't know, like they kind of need to have a better like moderation in place. And now Instagram, I mean, obviously owned by Facebook, but has a lot more moderation than somewhere like Facebook, um, which probably has done it well, 
or like done it a service, even though they like sometimes moderate very odd stuff that like doesn't need to be moderated right. a lot. Right. Um, yeah, they're like moderating the wrong things. Yeah, it's like- they're moderating the wrong things, <laughs> but it's like it, it is, there is like a more of a moderation tool like in place. Yeah, yeah. Needs refinement. <laughs> right. Um, I have some notes. <laughs> But yeah, so it's like in that respect, I'm like, I do, I don't think he's necessarily wrong because it kind of happened with Facebook already. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I agree with the points besides the middle one. I think uh, BuzzFeed has figured out how to make strong viral content at scale. Um, I think they figured out how to make, I think in 2022, they figured out how to make content at scale. I think that there's there's still a lot of learning and growing to do with the times. Like just because they're a big publication, a big digital publication that's been around for a long time, doesn't mean that like they still know how to make the same exact type of viral content that they did in 2015. Like mm-hmm. I think that things have, there it has been a slump. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. just that's just the reality. I think individual creators low key know how to move with the times way faster than a larger conglomerate like BuzzFeed. Yeah. Agree. Because there's a lot more bureaucracy. Yeah. There's a lot more bureaucracy. Exactly. Yeah. And the bigger you get, the slower you are. Yep. Right. And so that's what like a lot of the different publishers have run into. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, if we think about heyday, it's like, oh yeah, because that's when we were just like moving and grooving. You just like, there weren't even all those like, and like this may have been... There, I'm, I wasn't at BuzzFeed in like 2015, 2016, but like. Yeah, you were. Oh, I was. <laughs> did you just block out? I was like, I did. I was there. You I was were like, there I too. I got there in 2017. Um, scratch that. <laughs> but in like the early days where like they were working out of a bungalow and like all of these things, like they didn't have all the checks and balances and all of the legal and research teams to go through. So they were just firing out, out content, which did help it to grow mm-hmm. um, at the scale that it is now. So mm-hmm. it's it's like, I don't know, like you said, the, the bigger you are, the slower you yeah. are. When I started, there was no research team or like the spell check, like interns did spell check. It'd be like, can I get two interns to like look at this? Yeah. And then it was like, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous. Well, even Buzz or even Jonah, Jonah even quoted that history part of BuzzFeed in this financial letter. He was saying that BuzzFeed started out as a lab where people mm-hmm. would just like try out different content to see what was gonna stick and what was gonna trend. And I think in a lot of ways, making a lab to scale is a sticky is a sticky venture because labs burn through money. Mm-hmm. Like even if you think about like scientific labs, they they they're constantly asking the government and other parties for grants for money. They burn through money. Even it, NASA, yeah. NASA spends billions of dollars. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so it is a it is a it is an interesting dance. Like who actually has the upper hand and what's going to become viral? What's going to become? sticky what's going to be do super well Mm -hmm. is it the independent creator who can you know be a little bit more nimble but is also open to a lot of liability on a personal scale Uh or is it the publisher who can has all deep pockets and a legal team but you know they move slower and they make changes at a different rate Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And something that I've found just working more in like branded content too is that so like if someone is going to BuzzFeed to like make branded content, they're not only paying BuzzFeed as like a production studio, but they're also paying BuzzFeed for like the audience that they have built in. So if like versus going to someone who has like a hundred followers on something, if they post it, maybe a hundred people are seeing it. Mm -hmm. But going to someone who has like five million subscribers on this thing, then it's like, okay, we're blasting it out to that many people. Mm -hmm. And like, if you have a TV show that five million people watch, you're Grey's Anatomy, you're the top show on ABC. Right. You know? And so it's like, I don't remember what my point was, but I said it. <laughs> and that's what's but important. But those were some thoughts. <laughs> Thank you. you. You know what? This is what podcasts are for. Okay? <laughs> so 
feel like I said this financial report was really enlightening I, in general. Like I had no idea how these kind of letters, the formats of these letters work. And I had no idea that there was a section where companies list out all of the risks related to their business and industry. If you're an investor reading this letter, you're going to want it before you pour your money into something. You're going to want to know, like, what's the return? Is there any risks? And that's where I found, like, we got a little shout out. <laughs> oh, should I read this yeah, little? Yeah, read the little shout out. Little blip. The loss of key personnel or our failure to attract and retain other highly qualified personnel in the future could harm our business. Mm -hmm. Because basically they're losing, like, the influencer. So they have, like, all this infrastructure now of, like, BuzzFeed Video has however multi-million subscribers, but it's, like, how many people are watching it? You kind of need, like, the talent to attract people to watch it. It didn't used to be that way. Mm -hmm. Like when I started working at BuzzFeed, it wasn't very talent-based. Right. It just happened naturally. I, I was gonna actually bring that up. When the three of us entered BuzzFeed, I don't think any of us had the intention to become influencers. I remember I wanted to become a showrunner, still mm -hmm. do. Uh, you, Chantel, you went in to become a director. Mm -hmm. Fred, you went yeah. in to kind of look into hosting make and making yeah. videos. Mm -hmm. It wasn't yeah. like necessarily like, ooh, we're going to become go to this incubator to become influencers. No, that was the last thing on my mind. A thousand percent. Yeah. So when they say like, it's, I think it's a, a little bit more than just like influencers. It's, it's the loss of people who can keep their finger on the pulse mm -hmm. and also who regularly are online a lot mm -hmm. because that's a different kind of personality. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. who are all, who are very online. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different personality type. It so. is, it is. A personality type that I no longer am. Yeah. Say more about that. You know? Where it's like even being just like online a lot or like, because there's people who like tweet every single thought that they have. And I'm like, that's just like so not me. Mm -hmm. Or like just saying like, here's how I feel about this. Here's this, this, this. Where I'm like, that's just not me anymore. Because mm -hmm. it's like in a, in a sense that was me slash us like to an extent you know i don't think we were ever like like every single thought type right type tweeting no but um but were we just like just felt like i had more to say well i mean we were demanded to say more because mm -hmm. we had a quota of three videos a week mm -hmm. which now as an independent youtube creator on top of my other jobs mm -hmm. i don't know how we did it yeah mm -hmm. three videos a week mm -hmm. it's insane yeah. Yeah. And I also yeah. just think, too, like, we felt like we had to because it was just, like, a weird balance of, like, oh, we, like, I don't know, we we worked with um, Miss J and we were models for a day, but also at the same time there's like tragedy happening and it's like if we post this we also can't like ignore right. what's happening in the world so right. it just felt like a, a a song and dance of like making sure that we were keeping things balanced which kept us on the internet a lot more right mm -hmm. that's a really good point mm -hmm. um whereas like now it's not that there's less tragedy it's just that we're not our faces aren't online all the time being like, so here's what we did yeah. today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> FTFT. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like, well, you know, ladies. Today we're learning etiquette. Right. And it's like, well, ladies, there's also, you know, a bombing that happened yesterday. Right. You right. know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's tough. It was it was tough. And that that really did keep us on the yeah. internet a lot, a lot more. That's such a good um, point. But yeah, I, I also don't feel like I'm the same. Mm -hmm. I don't th feel like I'm as internet-y as I used to be. Mm -hmm. um, I, I go on the internet totally. all day long. Yeah. Because I'm still a human. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just being kind of like a, a face on the internet is like something a, that just is not my thing anymore, really. My hand is not on the pulse. Right. That's what I can say. Like, I'm definitely right. on the internet, but I'm right. not like... I don't know. Like, I'm probably one of those people who finds out about the trend five days after it's already yeah. left over with and, like, dead. <laughs> you know what I you mean? You know what trend I loved? What? I loved the Little Miss meme. Oh, yeah. Trend. Oh, that's already out. That's already yeah. done. I know. I know. It's way done. It was, like, it was a week. Really it was, it was it a was, moment in time. It was, like, right after the American Girl doll trend. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. I still love. I still think we need many American Girl dolls <laughs> to represent us all. <laughs> But yeah, that little, it was like Little Miss at my fucking breaking point. 
<laughs> you posted one in your Instagram story the other day that I loved. What was it again? I forget. I I'll have to look it yeah. up. I yeah. remember even responding. I had some being like, really good ones. That's too good. Yeah, like there would be some that I would post, and like literally, like twelve people would respond. Like twelve friends mm. would respond to be like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what it was. What was it? It was like Little Miss Final dot Final dot V two dot V three dot M O V. That one hurt. That one actually yeah. hurt. A triggering. Yeah, it was, it was. I felt convicted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I feel like we could roast. <laughs> we could. We could roast him. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Okay, I feel like we could roast BuzzFeed's business structure for years, but we're going to take a step back and analyze how an individual person can make money on the internet using the five-pronged publisher approach. But we're going to do that after, after the, the break. break. Welcome back, y'all. We are chatting about how to copy and paste how publishers make money on the internet for the individual content creator. But one thing I want to point out is the monopoly internet platforms and apps have in general. Did you know that Google has like a monopoly on their first page? You know, like if you search something in Google, the first I want to say inch of the screen is like Google affiliate products or Google people who have brokered some kind of deal to be on the top page. Yeah. And then like if you placement, sc- placement yeah. yeah. Placement is everything. Yeah. Because if you get on the second page, if your business lands on the second page of a Google search, you're kind of screwed. You're not, see- yeah. Right. Yeah. That's unfortunate. And likewise, Amazon, they own all of the servers. Yeah. Pretty much. Now grocery stores, and now one medical. I know. I yes. read a whole article on that. I was like, so there. This is. Oh, there has to be some kind of separation. I know. Where I'm like, I feel like antitrust stuff has to Get in come there. into play at some point. Right. Someone needs to break up Daddy Bezos. It's crazy. <laughs> you know what? He's really the, trying to take over. That's he, insane. He. I'm like, don't you have enough? You have enough. I went to the 365, which for those who might be listening who don't know, Whole Foods has like an offshoot, which is supposed to be like a more economical value. It's called 365 grocery stores out here in Los Angeles. And I went to one and they have a new way to pay, which is by handprint. Oh, yep. And I saw it. it. It's right in front of the cash register. And I was like, is that an, a handprint pay? Because like now when you go to Whole Foods, you can bring up your Amazon app, scan right. the coupon or whatever yeah. the fuck. Now you have a hand that you can put it in. And I said, is that a handprint reader? And the cashier goes, don't resist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was so even funny. just like, but like data wise, yes. But even just like germ wise, I'm like, yeah. in the age of COVID, do we want to be touching shit that much? Why do you want my handprint? Why do you? It's Get not just your finger. It's a whole hand. No, it's, it's like a palm hand. print. Like oh. that. How odd. So I, what is the, can you explain how I it even works? I didn't even go near it. I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't, like, I, I assume that there are many cameras. I assume that someone is, like, getting my DNA off yeah. of my breath by near, <laughs> being near that. So I just, they already own my data. Yeah. So, like. I know. Oh, that's the hard part. Is like they already know everything about us. It's like what's one more thing? But still, I'm just like oh. But the one, the one medical thing really hit me. It hit me different. Because mm-hmm. I was like, that's that's realized medical information. But then you know what I also read is that like so like in Google they sometimes will have like like or I think there's like maybe like a one medical like station or something in there. So then it's like. Amazon will be inside of Google, <laughs> getting Google's like me- employees like medical information. Isn't that crazy? I don't. We don't need that. We don't <sighs> need it. This is like it's too much. And I, I loved One Medical. And I have a really off topic comment to make. <laughs> yeah, say it. I love off topic. It's off topic. We love it. It's about advertising. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm almost like, we should have Ruff come in here and tell us about advertising because there's like Ooh. a lot of, so basically, I've been getting 
my bathroom. We're finally doing the bathroom. Oh, yeah. The primary bathroom. Yeah. So we've had contractors in, mostly Spanish speaking. All of our ads on Hulu now are Spanish, are in Spanish. <gasps> it's listening. It's listening. It's like, wow. Uh, wow. Wow, you're really in my home. Like, yeah, how this do is we, so unrelated. So how do we'll we turn all of it off? I know. It's not <laughs> unrelated. How do we turn all of it off? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm always like, Alexa, play Maggie Rogers. <laughs> right. It's like, <laughs> we love it. But I'm like, it's convenient sometimes. On the yeah. other side, Amazon's just writing down, she loves Maggie Rogers. <laughs> I'm in a Maggie Rogers phase. Me too. I love her. Mm, it just happened for me. But it's not off <laughs> topic. It just happened. Just happened. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. I'm here now. Um, but Fred, what you said is not really off topic because what we're touching on here is these people, the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebooks, whatever, they're absolute whales mm-hmm. in the space. So as the individual goes into this, like if you are somebody who's opening an online business or wants to make content or whatever, you need to know that these are the whales in the space and positioning yourself within the, their structure is paramount Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know because otherwise you'll just get drowned out yeah Mm -hmm. you know especially since everything's all algorithmic now that they that is that's that they built Mm -hmm. algorithmic that they built Mm -hmm. not like another government agency or something right because it's like the the whales (laughs) that you're talking about where it's like okay yeah I'm just gonna go for YouTube it's like who owns YouTube Google like Mm -hmm. okay I'm just gonna go for Instagram who owns Instagram Facebook Facebook. you know like TikTok fight dance Chinese Uh, yeah right yeah Mm -hmm. and the (laughs) the amount of data they're pulling too people are like don't go on TikTok but I was like it's funny It's a free app. It's really funny. It's funny and free. It's funny and free. So <laughs> thinking about those five pronged approaches, the display ads, subscriptions, spawn con, events, affiliate linking, how can someone use these to their advantage? We're opening it up, this new segment, into a, a, a Money Honey's brainstorm. Ooh, we a workshop, brainstorm if all the you time. will. Yeah, something. A <laughs> workshop for the whales. <laughs> <laughs> a workshop for the working girl. <laughs> I love it. So, display ads. <clears throat> wow, I died for a second. <laughs> <laughs> She's back. I'm back. <laughs> I touched death for a second. All right. Uh, display ads. Now, I have a thought about this. Obviously, we can't buy a display ad on like a website that's like, come visit Devin. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> Peace sign. No, but it's like your like one of your stock photos. But I did. Devin, Devin is bought actually. Yeah. Devin has been purchased many times over. I've been whoring myself out on the internet <laughs> for a long time. We should just what? I just like was you back in a lady like for a second where I was like, we should just do stock photography for a week. <laughs> did you just <laughs> It it jumped. Did you just have a stroke? It, it came jumped out, out. It was a reflex. Yeah. <laughs> Stop hilarious. Before a week is actually hilarious. I mean, how much money can we make? I know. I'm like, is this an experiment? I people know. Should look into stock photography. For oh, some I only extra cash. people slash me. me. <laughs> I made. This was back in 2013. Okay. I made. Nine hundred dollars a day for doing stock photography. Oh my god! But that doesn't. There was no residuals. Okay. There was no payback. So okay. it's kind of an awful day. It's kind of a shitty deal when you think about how many times I've seen my image. Yeah. <laughs> on the internet. You're popular. I am. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But so display Anyways. ads. <laughs> so the whales of the world. <laughs> I think of display ads is like really using your Instagram and your social media to your advantage. Mm-hmm. I was on TikTok the other day and I got served this video of this guy going, hey everyone, I'm Brendan. You might not know me, but you will now because I'm in Los Angeles and I bought this ad to target you. And it was an Whoa. independent creator who bought a geolocated ad yeah. on TikTok to, to let me know who he was. Yeah. I mean, you can even like Instagram is always like, do you want to boost this post? And I'm like, no, let it fail. I don't want to boost my post. I don't care anymore. Yeah. But you can. 
I don't think it's a bad strategy, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. Right? No, it seems smart. Mm-hmm. This guy wanted to get noticed. I noticed him and I followed him because I was like, damn, he's really putting himself out there. <laughs> I want to see what else he does with it. Yeah. I'm curious now. Is there, I mean, I almost feel like a version of an ad is just almost like collaborating with other creators. I th- right? Yeah. Because then you're exposing yourself to their audience and then right. vice versa. It's almost like an ad. Great point. Yeah. It, because like you're... Yeah, you're displaying yourself to their audience, yeah. essentially. Yeah, so it's more of like a, it's like a, it's like a makeshift ad, almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can kind of, you can almost create your own, like, character universe, which is kind of what, like, the TikTok houses are yeah. doing and stuff like that, where it's like, they all exist on an individual level, but then it's also like, ooh, I, oh, Freddie and Devin just released a TikTok, like, I want to go check it out, yeah. you know? Yeah, Subscription-based content. Now, obviously, like, for a while... Do you still have your Patreon, Chantel? No. no? Yeah. Patreon is something like that. Right. Um, I follow a gal who is a pole instructor who releases videos every month on different like pole tricks and routines that you can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I pay for that. Mm-hmm. You could also use OnlyFans for other things. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to use it for like sex work or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You could use it for just exclusive content, which, mm-hmm. you, which people do have to pay for. Mm-hmm. Right, um, right. Regularly. If you want a platform, you could also just like de- platform it and be like I host these Zoom sessions every Wednesday at 1pm mm-hmm. here's like the fee to like cause even like um, like my friend was doing like her Pilates instructor went on Zoom like during the pandemic and stuff and so she'd be like okay like the session costs however many dollars and then here's the link to do like live Pilates. Yeah, and it feels intimate. It feels exclusive. It feels like, you know, when it's not on a platform, it does feel very personal, Mm -hmm. which I think people would appreciate depending on like your vibe and your brand. Yeah, and because since it was Zoom, like the instructor would be able to be like, no, you need to like arch your back more. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Well, like even Fred, when we were talking about so Fred is like DJing now and stuff Mm. and I was like Freddie what if you did just like curated playlists for people where it's like okay don't you don't have to hire me to be the live DJ but I'll create a mix for you Mm -hmm. that's brilliant like a two hour mix whatever you want like tell me what the vibe is I'll like live do it and I'll send it to you and you pay for it yeah like they're depending on what your art is yeah I love that. I'm, I'm definitely gonna do that. Or even like, like a painting commission. Yeah, you know. Or even like Twitch. Twitch is kind of like a subscription service. Mm. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Yeah, Twitch is like a hybrid of a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also Discord. I feel like yeah. you can set up a subscription-based model on Discord. Oh, really? I'm de- I, like, yeah. I think there are rooms that you can, or private Facebook groups. That's another thing. Oh, sure. You can pay for like. Uh, Access mm-hmm. or ideas in a private Facebook group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. like on, on a Discord, cool. you can have different channels. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, if you're at this level, you automatically get bumped into like a different channel that's like different access to you as a creator. Right. Or, you know, like Discord has, they have like a voice chat feature that's fun. And right. So you could like do that. Right. Um, so SpawnCon is pretty obvious, mm-hmm. right? partnering with Spawn, but we've done this before, so I feel like tips about sponsored content and what you can do with sponsored content. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of um, third-party websites, like I know um, Meltwater and like Aspire that connects like brands with creators. Captivate mm-hmm. is another one. Captivate, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the thing about SpawnCon is you re- I feel adamantly that you really need to have some kind of representation because a mm-hmm. lot of times brands, especially now and it's really shitty, they'll really try to take advantage of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I actually know a few, I mean, there's, <clears throat> I know a, a, another influencer who is still doing all of her own deals. It's mm-hmm. interesting because she, she talks a lot about um, publicly a lot about, you know, making sure you are charging your worth, make sure mm-hmm. you're not getting, you know, screwed over by these brands. Um, but I, 
I actually think that she is really like brokering these deals mm-hmm. herself. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we should bring her on. Yeah, definitely yeah. We should probably bring her yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, because she's killing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so but yes, I would I would generally agree that like having some type of um, representation just to make sure that you're not lowballing yourself mm-hmm. um, with these deals because they do require a lot of work. They require a lot of mental. Um, creative work like you know you generally have to like pay for all the production pieces mm-hmm. yourself so renting out a space hiring a photographer or a videographer all these things cost money getting your hair done getting your makeup done like you want to make these posts look as high caliber as possible and it costs mm-hmm. and a lot of times you don't well actually all the time you don't get paid for production for these, costs for, yeah you don't get any kind of upfront stipend or anything for production costs so mm-hmm. it's definitely something that is doable but there it's layered for sure mm-hmm. 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 yeah even just the amount of emails <laughs> the emails the emails so many emails i know the emails though the emails events mm-hmm. meet and greets mm-hmm. yes yeah yeah now should we talk about like the VidCon of it all? Yeah, too? let's talk about VidCon because I'm I'm curious. Like that to me, that is an event that is like it, it's clear that it makes money. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just kind of like, how do you make money off of events when you're uh, like, are you just charging ticket costs? Because for our meet and greet, for example, we didn't charge. We didn't charge anyone to come. It was mm-hmm. actually more of just like it felt more like a like a just like a fun celebration mm-hmm. and meet and greet and hang out sesh. Mm-hmm. Um, but how can people, you know, make money from these things and not feel slimy about it? I mean, I wonder if it's like if you are doing like a subscription type thing, if it's like a certain tier, there's like one meet and greet per quarter mm-hmm. or something like that. So that way it's like you're not paying directly for the meet and greet. It's like a built-in cost almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah like a built-in cost for like however much money a month, this is one of the perks that you get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just need to like have enough people that would like want to meet you. Right. Um, which comes with just time and building an audience. What other types of events? I mean, partnering with other folks, like, yeah. you know, who was, who are already throwing events, mm-hmm. I think is always smart. So, like, for an example, I might partner with, like, a yoga class and do, oh. like, a meet and greet, come mm-hmm. take yoga with me mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I'm bringing that business exposure, and then I'm also, I have an activity behind the meet and greet. I'm just not posing for pictures. Right. right. So I think partnering with, like, an event or an activity is probably smart and fun. That yeah. is cool. Um, or come watch a movie with me, which mm-hmm. you can also do virtual events. You yeah, can, which you is can. big, right? Thank you, right. pandemic, for kind of introducing that into the lexicon. But I mean, I guess it is a bright side. Yeah, yeah. like even even on Disney Plus, I think you can like watch something simultaneously with someone, with someone. just like built into yeah. it. Yeah, who wants to watch Shark Fest with me? <laughs> 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 Count me in. <laughs> yeah, and then affiliate linking. Yeah. I mean, huge. You can do that on Amazon. Mm-hmm. You, can you can do that anywhere. Anywhere. Pinterest right now apparently is paying creators to come aboard their like site and make content for them. I need to like look into it. I've seen it on TikTok a lot of people being like, "Y'all need to check out Pinterest if you're a content creator." Mm. Real bad because I mean, it's like popping off, especially if you're a content creator of color. They have like a content creator fund mm. on Pinterest, which oh, is like nice. basically you submit your photos. Uh, to, to live in their lexicon. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's such a good idea. And mm-hmm. also, Pinterest is doing, like, stories now. Mm-hmm. Oh. Have y'all seen that? No. Like, they, you basically, like... So many stories. Yeah. Every... <laughs> Soon it's going to be, like, TikTok story. <laughs> oh, actually, I think it already is TikTok a thing, does right? have stories, yeah. Yeah, they have stories. Yep. They're so annoying, because I, I, I don't like... <laughs> I don't think TikTok... I don't think stories should exist on the TikTok app itself, because it's, like... I don't know, they're annoying. I want to <laughs> click on the creator and look at their page, but it then immediately takes me to their story. Mm. Mm. And a lot of times the stories is just like three to four seconds of content I would already watch on their page. Mm. So it feels more of like an obstacle. Whereas like stories on like Snap or Instagram. It's different. Yeah, it feels like more intimate shoulder content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Especially because people don't generally post what they post in stories in their feed. Right. right. Versus TikTok, if if it's kind of the same vibe, mm-hmm. then it's not really. Mm-hmm. 
doesn't feel personal in that way. And YouTube stories is crazy these yeah. days. YouTube shorts. YouTube shorts, my mm-hmm. bad. I can't keep up. Dinosaur. <laughs> okay. <laughs> T Rex. <laughs> Not, I mean, a T Rex, but also you have thoughts and ideas because you know how yeah. content, yeah, what what it takes to make good viral content mm-hmm. to make something poppy. Yeah, and it's We're just tired. It's exhausting. Yeah, yeah. But it's not impossible it's not. for the individual. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. this is honestly. I feel like this is. I'm getting a lot of ideas from this episode. Mm-hmm. Like. For myself, so I hope that our listeners can like take some tips and it can help you guys to like grow your brand and become, you know, start those initial steps or continue those steps of becoming a content creator that's actually making money. Mm Because, you know, it is hard and it is an art and you have to really finesse. Like, there's a lot of finessing Mm -hmm. that goes into being like a, you know, growing an audience and making sure that you are producing content of a certain caliber, but also mm-hmm. maintaining your mental health and all of these things. Like there's just like a lot of finessing and massaging that you have to do to mm-hmm. figure out um, a rhythm, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, with content creating, mm-hmm. so. Yeah, and hopefully knowing how the big whales are making money can help provide insight as to like how you can be competitive in this space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not making money just from AdSense. No, they're out there, mm-hmm. they are out here. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, this feels unfinished. Yeah, it's not a it's not a good bake just yet. <laughs> you know, I think we're gonna have to do a two parter episode because I did mention like balancing your mental health and all those mm-hmm. things. Like that is a whole other beast and part of being a content creator. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're gonna talk more about that for this part too, like mm-hmm. the soft costs of being mm-hmm. a content creator on the internet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're gonna want to hear about that side of it before you start your online endeavors, y'all. But you're going to have to do that next episode. Until next time. Bye. Bye.